Welcome to another episode of our journey to Iron Man. Uh, this is our podcast. For those that haven't listened to our previous episodes, today we have a special guest, Dr. Francho de Toy. He's with us. Um, he's also part of the Eden Protocol team. Um, he's participating um, in a in a race with us at the end of the month. This is the big news. So we are doing the still by. X triathlon. Um, there's a sprint and a standard. The sprint is, if I remember correctly, you swim 500, mm. you cycle 12 k's, and 14 then k's. Mm, mm, okay, okay. Mm, yeah. um, better. And then um, you run what four k's? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, no, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Four, yeah. And the standard is, is you swim uh, 1,200 meters, you cycle 30, and you run 10. And so. You guys know Ingrid, she's going to partner with, uh, with that, uh, particularly the standard one with me, uh, Francia and Andy Miller's doing the sprint, um, but they're taking their time. So they're it's not, not going to sprint. sprint it's yeah. <laughs> not, definitely not sprinting. Completing. <laughs> yeah, completing. But <laughs> enough of me rambling nonsense. Um, I want you guys to meet Dr. Francia. Dr. Francia, will you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about um, who you are and what you do and where you're from? Yeah, oh, happy to. So I've been fortunate to have grown up in the natural medicine industry. I, I say often, but it's actually now a little more fit to the, the wellness industry. Uh, since I was young, being treated by a homeopath, having seen the, you know, kind of like miraculous health benefits of having a natural lifestyle or natural diet or good kind of like focus on how the environment and the mind works together. Um, it's been a journey of kind of like failures and successes and more failures along the way. But at the end of the day, I've seen that when you partner with the right people along the way, every area of your life accelerates in its growth and you get health, you get well-being, you get mindset fixes, you get gr business growth. And kind of like that's a combination, I think, what I've, I've seen working in South Africa for about 10 years, working overseas for just over two years in the wellness space. It's really been quite exciting to see everything growing. So you've done the... Iron Man 70.3, the first year it was in Muscle Bay. Yes, particularly I say half Iron Man because I honor the full guys, but yes, the, the first year it was here in Muscle Bay 2022. Yes, I completed the half okay. Iron Man. So you're not only an expert on the medical physical side, because you just gave us a, a, a quick overview. You also work with a lot of pro athletes. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. And so from that perspective, um, being an athlete yourself, you, uh, so, him being an athlete, what is your fastest um, half marathon? Uh, hour 22? 122.24. I'd rather go higher than lower, but it was round about there. He's quick. It also said it was downhill at uh, Meidingsburg. So, um, got my PBs downhill, on the 5 and the 10 and the 21. It's like we got all my... <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> it's a good good time regardless. If, time. Yeah, For me to do it under two hours would be a good time. Yeah. He did it in less than an hour and a half. That's yeah, pretty decent. That's five years of road running. It's, it's like every week time trial, you improve, you improve, you improve consistently. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's something we learn. I'm not a runner uh, per se. I'm getting better. Um, but that's encouraging, but it's also a little intimidating. But let's get back to the, the question. Uh, from an athlete's perspective, but also a practitioner's perspective, um, just give us a little bit of an idea of what the race is like, preparation is like, what you would suggest for um, inspiring uh muscle by 70.3 athletes to, to yeah. get to. I, I'm usually the person that jumps in as a guinea pig and just experiments because I'm the like that. I'm a, usually a happy-go-lucky and carefree. And um, when I was starting to train for the half Ironman, I didn't have um, really people to refer to to explain things or to give me kind of like um, shortcuts. Um, I literally jumped in. I didn't even think about or know that I could compete in a shorter triathlon before the half Ironman. So it's, that was my first triathlon in my entire life. And the biggest advice is usually, yes, aligning as soon as possible with a coach that can take you through the, you know, from swim, bike, run, the, you know, the disciplines of the three and having experience of what the transitioning actually means from the mindset of swimming to the mindset of you know, cycling to the mindset of the running but also discomfort with your gear and switching from one to the next. Having peace of mind is one thing that I think is the best advice I can give because, yes, I was stressing the evening before. I, when all it came together, I realized like, oh my goodness, this is a complicated story now. <laughs> it's actually, it's like, I, I think I, I probably obsessed about 30 times about 
if my stuff was in my bags in the right position and I'm actually going to get there because one of my weaker points is directions. So I was like, when I think about going into this shoot and getting to my actual bags, I'm like, let's think about that 30 times. Am I going to get there? Am I going to get lost? <laughs> I'm not going to find my bag. <laughs> so in any case, it's good to go through a mental exercise and actually practice it through at least once, maybe multiple times before a big event like this. But mainly the mindset. That's the big thing. It's like if you can get what it, I like excitement. I like an adrenaline rush. I like doing some things, many things at the last minute. But whatever it means for you to have that peace of mind, it's like, oh, this is still fun. This is still exciting. It's, mm. I think, the biggest um, advice I would give for someone on this it's type of journey. very good advice for me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you do an ice bucket, I have to think, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> but but uh, just thinking about what he's saying now, it's like if you've been to the bucket where all the bikes are lined up and all the bags are, it's intimidating. It's, if you, you know... To go and see, I mean, how many athletes? Two and a half thousand? Two and a half thousand. That's without the... That's that's crazy. The relays. How how are we going to do that? He's talking on running for a bag. We (laughs) go in a relay and I'm thinking, now, where are you going to get me? In transition, for for those that don't know, um, in Master Bay, at the Baca, which is the location. um, So uh, the start for the swim is at Santos. You swim around towards the Baca and that's a massive parking lot, which they convert into transition. Um, and Transition's got all your bags that go from swimming to cycling. And then when you come back, it is or from, running. Oh, from or cycling running. to running. Um, and so you have to get your bag according to your race number um, at the right location. So there's a little bit of, a, a, of a, a possible administrative issue that can happen there. For us that uh, functions but the as a team, for us. you've got a... So each athlete runs with a, um, a monitor, which is your chip. Um, and that yeah. needs to transition between the athletes for a relay team. Yeah, yeah. Or, well, we're just breaking for a little bit of a uh, commercial quickly. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, I think I just need to switch off something sound over there because this thing is losing its mind. Just give me a second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Commercial is over. So we fixed our, our technical. <laughs> fixed. Fixed. <laughs> fixed. Uh, um, I'm proud things with Anne. Anne, so your question was what? Um, if he says he's going to fetch a bag, where am I getting you? So at transition, I'll be waiting there. So do you stand when I come in? Or do we know this way? We will figure it out. We've got a, about eight there's, months there's left. There's lots of time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, so this is the cool thing about racing this weekend. Um, you will get a personal feel for what it is to go through transition from swimming to cycling to running. Um, and so I think that's going to be, that's, the, that's part of why we participate in the triathlon this weekend or the, the, in two weeks time, um, end of the month. And so it is important for us to, to, to get to grips with what that feels like from a personal perspective, telling the story um, so that we actually know what it is like to participate in a triathlon. But also transition for me is also the biggest thing. Um, getting used to where you are allowed to be on your bike, off your bike, which side of the line, all of that. And from what I figured out is inside of the transition zone, you're off your bike always. On the other side of the line, which is kind of um, the bike side, you are, <laughs> bless you, um, you are on your bike always. Um, and so, yep. <laughs> but you get off your bike before you come into transition. So you're never on your bike in transition. Um, that's the main thing we need. But that's my problem because I'm on the bike leg of the thing. So yeah. running is you, you get out there and you just sprint away. So Emil's going to do us so a what? A 135. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 145. You guys, just calm down. You, you, you can calm down. You've got yeah, an option. I'm going to calm down because otherwise you're going to give me time for swimming. Okay, that's fine. Emil, have your tight. We're, um, what's for English? Uh, it sounds like we're, we're, we're proud things, but that means we, we, we try to stick with English unless your airtime runs out. It's good to be safe with Afrikaans, but you're making me think the excitement does kick in. I know my coach told me it's like take it slow with this swim, leave some for the legs for the cycle, and then if you've got something left over, you can give it to the run. But that strategy was maybe specific for me because I'm a runner. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like with um, Bruce Fordyce with the comrades. He says like he starts like a, I think um, what did he say? He starts like a, what's the wording now? 
probably oh, it starts like a coward and ends like a euro. Okay. So it, there is a, there is a formula for success that's I think duplicatable in other races. It's like you do maybe start at a moderate pace and you build up. And for me, with half marathons, usually if you reach ten, you, you, you you're pacing, but at ten you're not racing, and then so you're not going for a time yet. Mm-hmm. You're just keeping a good pace. You're listening and learning to, for your body, and obviously there's ways but at 10 kilometers you decide i feel good enough i'm going to push and then for the next half of the race you t- try and get there for a time i actually try and see where my body's limits are at the moment so i push hard in the beginning now to see where i tap out mm-hmm. yes um when when is it starting like becoming painful or then i know okay maybe slower pace longer you know that's my method of thinking now and now it's the right time to do that. I've had a very interesting uh, definition of exercise on Instagram. I wish I could quote the author. But in essence, he was saying every time you're training, it's a form of failure. Even in terms of good exercise routines, you train until failure for the muscle because that's how you know it's going to be growing. And it means every time it's a practice run, because people don't like the word failure, and that's maybe a strong statement, but it's about it's the practice of um, learning and growing from learning and making mistakes, let's say. And then the actual race day is just a joy of experiencing what your body's capable of yeah. doing because you've already pushed the limits and had those failing moments in the journey. Yeah. It's a combination of what you've done in preparation. Yes. So on preparation, um, you've also got uh, therapy, which you are now the expert on. So you are also uh, quite invested in um, nutrition, gut health, all of that. Mm. Maybe touch on that a little bit for us as athletes um, in what you would describe as a, maybe a, a good way to get your diet going, the nutrition you take, supplementation maybe. I would start everything with mindset. And it means that the food you eat can be healthy and nourishing to your body if you have a mindset of gratitude towards that food. And like as many people do, you bless the food, changing the entire way that your body is going to digest that food and get nutrition and energy from that. So gratitude and mindset towards food and to all areas of life, really. And then when you're thinking about where we need a, let's say, a buffer zone or have to make up for things as we do burning f- lots of fuel and that creates oxidative stress and that creates inflammation, then there's approaches that are very vital and that can be, yes, gut-centric because if you support the gut, you have a system in place that optimizes all other systems of the body because the gut is so intimately linked to every other organ and every other system. Um, If we talk about the nervous system especially because of the gut-brain connection. So you already have a feedback mechanism there to get the mindset right because you feed the gut, you feed the mind. And you'll have more endorphins, you'll have more dopamine, you'll have more serotonin. You'll have a pathway open to improve your mindset more and more exponentially. And then that, that's a positive feedback loop. Instead of a negative feedback loop, which is a negative spiral, it's like, I can't do it, I'm failing, I'm hurting. And you go down and deeper and deeper and deeper down in that negative feedback loop or spiral. So we want to build towards exponential growth in that direction. And then, yeah, we're listening to the body, eh? It's really, I'm a massage therapist. Um, it's one of the ways that I mostly interact with um, sports people and pro athletes. And in so many of these cases, I look at my, my, um, my clients and I think, how are they really getting in touch with their bodies? Because most of them burn the candle at both ends. Yeah. The, you look at them from the surface, it's like um, amazing F1 Ferrari. And it's like the car is beautiful and the tires are beautiful. And these people are competing and winning races. But if you lift the engine of the car, you start to see it's like, oh my goodness, what's happening here? This is rust. This is really deteriorating. And that's the unfortunate thing that you see in many people in this pro-competitive environment. They compete so well for so many years and then one day they die of heart attack, just like that. Mm. And that's the thing of the awareness I want to bring to people. It's like really get in touch with your body because the body will always give you signs and signals of what it needs. We just need to create the space to stop and listen. Mm And that's where mindfulness or meditation or breathing practices or cold therapy can all train the body to be in that mindset of stillness and rest. 
um, because no one can compete optimally if they don't have rest and recovery. It's yeah. always the balance of the two. And most of these people tend to overdo the, the, the let's say, the exercise component and they underperform on the rest and recovery. So we talk about the grit to recovery because many people have grit to, to persevere and succeed. But very few people have been taught about the grit or the perseverance for rest and recovery. Mm. It has to be tackled as passionately as well to prioritize the, the downtime and the rest recovery time. Which one of the parts um, that it influences inflammation, um, which is a big part of recovery. Um, so it's not only this that, that supports recovery from inflammation, it's also your diet. Um, and that yes. plays a big part. Now, so speaking about diet and supplementation, what is your uh, feeling? Because the gut plays a massive part in that. And uh, providing your body yeah. with food that it is um, accustomed to digest well because i know some people struggle with allergens um, like your glutens your um, lactose all of that what what would be your angle on that um, specifically for people in terms of diet and supplementation to help mm. them with with inflammation recovery all of that in in um, partnership with resting well yes I, it definitely also starts with being mindful of how your body responds to food because many people have got, for example, let's say um, an allergy to dairy or cow's milk and they don't know it because they've never really asked the question or stopped to think or really stopped to have that space. I've drank a glass of milk. How am I feeling for the next hour? Because society is so distracted at this stage, you know, social media and TV and other, you know, things of our life. But it's in so many distracted directions that it's not always that's able to say, how did this glass of milk affect me? And if you can build that body intelligence, body awareness, um, you will start to learn a lot of things. And not to emphasize like, oh my goodness, now my body's responding in this way. It's just the starting point. I, for example, had a very transformative experience from going from when I was young, having um, allergies to cow's milk, uh, the formula cow's milk, but that's also pasteurized cow's milk. And that's a long story by itself, um, where it, I realized it caused a lot of my dis-ease and I overcame that by trans... Um, you could say transferring to more fruit juice, more actually vegetable juices, as well as later on goat's milk, where I don't have any allergies towards. But I've learned to restore my gut microbiome so I can now drink even conventional dairy mm -hmm. and eat conventional dairy products like cheese. And my body doesn't respond the same way anymore mm -hmm. because I've learned to listen to my body and restore my relationship to that food because there's also food trauma. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to think about also how we process repeated responses to this food because of a trauma that was associated, mm. either from the food itself, how we reacted, or the environment where the food was administered, you could say. Yeah. Thinking about those things. Um, there's lots of those patterns that repeat itself because of how we've um, perceived that um, kind of like food influence. But back to maybe a practical point, it is good for people to understand that the kind of like dietary approach to support the body is yes through the gut but through an anti-inflammatory focus because most people are into the highly inflammatory state and other people can cause call it an oxidative state other people can call it um maybe the, the the aging process or the rusting rusting process as a principle in the body most people benefit from an antioxidant or an anti-inflammatory based approach mm -hmm. There's also the story about, you know, more, you're more acidic, that's maybe more inflammatory. Mm. You want to be more alkaline, which is more anti-inflammatory. Not exactly true scientifically pH-wise, because every system in the body has got its own pH that is tightly regulated. But in the, in the bigger scheme of things, yes, certain phytochemicals or plant molecules have an anti-inflammatory benefit. We're talking about turmeric and ginger, ashwagandha as a herbal medicine, skeletium as a plant-based medicine from South Africa. So many of them are powerful anti-inflammatories. Um, and antioxidant properties, and they really help to um, combat the stress sores of life mm. and give you, it fills up that extra tank mm. in the body. Um, because most people, when they're going out into activities, if you think about the body as a bank of um, investments in health and energy and all these things that you have to withdraw from, Many people make withdrawals all the time and never make a deposit back in. Mm. So you actually want to have not just a a full bank you want to actually like, like a camel's back <laughs> you want to have a backpack full of extra reserve yeah um 
uh, finances available, but for the body to withdraw from constantly. So that's where antioxidants come in and that's where anti-inflammatory foods come in. That's where focus on nutrient density also comes in. It's not about the amount you eat. You can have a quarter of a plate, but if it's mm. nutrient dense, it can be the same value and higher value nutritionally than a full plate of food. Mm. So thinking about like nutrient density and organic is also a good approach. Which also plays into water. And so quality water, water the big exactly problem we have approach. today is we, we've become so accustomed to buying reverse osmosis water or RO water, like we all know. Um, we buy it from all the shops, but the problem is the water has been stripped of all its nutrients. Yes. Um, and <clears> because water is a battery, if it's void of nutrients, it will go find it wherever it can. And so you basically drink water that is void, so it strips you of all your nutrients and then you um, just flush it out of your system. The big thing is we need to then also invest in quality water that is uh, fortified yes. with nutrients again after it's been cleaned. Because we, we need to clean our water. That's the situation with where we live. Uh, we don't have quality water. And so cleaning it, but then filling it back up so that your body is supplemented and not um, stripped from what it already has. And so that's a big thing we've been speaking about. Um, so yes, here's, here's the segue. Um, you see Francois, um, Dr. Francois de Toy, cycle with us, swim with us, run with us. It's because he is part of um, the Eden Protocol team that is um, raising funding for, in partnership with Ironman for the kids, for kids in the Mossel Bay area. So we're super stoked about that. We haven't really made this so public, um, but he is now part of uh, Team Eden Protocol. And he's also offered his services in a larger capacity, becoming part of um, the, the cause that Eden Protocol stands for. And that will unfold. Um, in the future. I don't know if you want to add on to that a little bit more. It's been exciting to be pulled back into this whole vibe. I know I did the Off Ironman in 2022, had a rest year. Rest is not really rest for me. I'm always pushing myself, but that's part of, you know, becoming, growing in that sense. I'm not a naturally disciplined person, but I've chosen to follow a disciplined path in life. And the re but last year was a needed rest year. And then this year, so now I want a big challenge again. I would definitely want to compete in something. And I always do better in a sport where I know the common drive is towards a greater cause than myself. So we're just with, you know, um, growing in terms of a relationship with you, Francois, and growing in terms of understanding what Eden Protocol stands for. It just became apparent to me. It's like, I actually don't want to do a race if it's not for a cause that supports the community. Mm -hmm. And that's really what came to this point. So I'm actually exceptionally honored to be on the journey of Eden Protocol. Well, we appreciate you. Um, it's it's like with Janina. Janina jumped on board um, as a therapist as well. You know her really well. Yes. Um, and she she is not necessarily participating in the race itself, but she goes with swimming um, and she really enjoys that. She's a really good swimmer as well. And so it is, it's more um, than just us banding together for common cause. It's actually becoming family. We're building quality relationships. But we really appreciate your expertise, um, your support, the momentum you bring to the table. It makes a massive difference. Um, we love getting our brains blown uh, with quality information. It, it, it's, it's what we need because we're rookies um, in this field. You've done the 70.3 in Muscle Bay. Um, and so we really appreciate um, your participation, Janina's participation from a professional perspective. Um, otherwise, we would just hurt ourselves um, because we're ignorant. <laughs> So I want to thank you. Uh, we're definitely going to do another podcast um, in the future with you. There's so much more to talk about. Um, and we will see you guys on another adventure real soon. But particularly, this team will be doing the Stolby Extra Athlon the 30th of March, 2024. And until then, be cool. Be ice bucket cool. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>